Hi guys and welcome back for another writing video. I'm excited today to talk about something that I think is probably one of the most important things in the writing process and something that I personally can, I personally believe that you could not be a successful, and by successful I don't mean like popular or published, I just mean like successful in yourself writer until you're able to do this and what I think is one of the most important things about writing and I'm going to share that with you guys. Um, a past few, maybe it's like I've seen this comment pop up a lot in um, the comments of my videos is that you guys say, and it completely melts my heart every time you do, that you guys say that you admire that I don't steer away from controversial issues, I dive right into them, that you guys like that I talk about that and you like that I write bravely. I think there was one comment that you guys said you like that I write brave and that I don't, like I, if I want to write something I'm going to write it. I don't let like the what normal people do or the controversial issues stand in my way. If I have something to say I'm going to say it and I'm going to go against what most people do in terms of writing. And you guys saying that, that I write brave and that I'm not afraid of con like controversial stuff, that really means a lot to me. And so I want to teach you guys how I came to be that way. And the most important thing is to write like no one is watching. And that is something that I do and I really think is the most important thing in the writing process. Because if you write like someone's sitting over your shoulder, you're never going to be able to produce something that you're proud of, and let alone that other people can be proud of. Because if you don't, if you're not connected to your work, you don't love your work, how is someone else going to be able to love it? Like it always says, you cannot love until you're able to love yourself. And I think the same does apply for writing. So it is so important to be able to write like no one is watching. Um, I know it's a lot easier said than done. Writing is one of those things, I'm just speaking for me of course, writing is one of those things that it's freeing. It's a way to escape. It's a way to come clean and release yourself and be whatever you want to be. You can be a monster. You can be a villain. You can be the hero. You can be a queen. You can be whatever you want. And you can get rid of whatever feelings you want. And you're doing that really sheltered. Like, what's someone going to think reading this? What's someone going to think reading this? You're not letting yourself go completely. Being true to your writing and being true to your characters is completely letting yourself go go and not worrying about who is watching who is reading this because honestly what I have come to learn and it is one of the most important things I think you can know people are gonna judge you no matter what no matter if you write the next war and peace you're at the next 50 shades of gray no matter what you write whether it's controversial completely classic you are going to have haters and you are going to have critics and somebody in the world is going to be so ticked off at your decisions and it has nothing to do with them. Like honestly, there's going to be some person where the fact that you even wrote this book affects their life and it makes them like, oh this affects me so much. Because that's just how people are and that's just kind of how life is. And I see it here on YouTube, no matter what I want to post, no matter if like, if I have a thousand people telling me please upload this, there's going to be at least like a handful of people who it just like ticks off. Because that's honestly life and you cannot please everyone. And it's the same with writing, you're going to write something and someone's going to be like, oh my god that's amazing and then someone's going to be like, oh my god that's horrible. Because that, like I said, you cannot please everyone and trying to please everyone, the only one you're not going to please is yourself. And the w most important person that needs to be happy with your work is you. I've I don't know how am I going to phrase this. I grew up um, in a s environment where controversial issues were not okay. It wasn't okay to be how I was. It wasn't o a depression was something to be like it was something frowned upon. It was something it was like that you're weak. It was not strong. You know, like eating disorder was all signs of weakness. You couldn't like don't have it because this is like a secret. This is a shit. Um, it's mostly my like suicide stuff. This is it was like a shame. This is something that we should be like ashamed of. It was really that is my that's what I learned growing up is that this is something to be ashamed of, and I was kind of pushed into a corner. So I already had that kind of like 
oh, sh sh don't talk about this, don't do that, don't do this, keep that in, like, don't. Uh, it's actually, it's talked about in Fragile, but one of my, like, earliest memories, um, going back to school after a suicide attempt was, do not talk about this, because this needs to be kept in-house, this is, like, an embarrassment. And I already had that, so I was already living my life like that, so I was definitely not gonna let it influence the one free place I had and that is my writing. My writing was the one place where I could like completely just like come out and be who I wanted to be, like be who I wanted and say what I wanted and not hold back and I was not gonna let those demons follow me into my writing because I was already being told don't do this and don't say this and make sure you do this and be like I mean come literally like quoting let it go now like be the good girl you always have to be like this is what your image is follow this and when I was writing I didn't have to be that person anymore and that was what was exciting and I just it makes me so sad to think that people don't write things because they're afraid like your writing should be their one safe place where you can do anything in life you can slay the dragon you can jump off a cliff like whatever you want to do in your writing that is your safe place I think it is so important to feel safe and secure in your own work because if you are not safe in your own writing you're not gonna be safe anywhere else I know for me my safest place in the entire world is a lot is in my writing and with my characters because it's the only place in the entire universe where I can be 500 million percent me and where it's okay and where I'm not going to be judged. Your fictional characters are not going to judge you. And honestly, you can write the most controversial, like I said before, you can write the most controversial thing known to me and you can write a book about a tree. You're going to be judged no matter what because that's just part of the business. That's part of what it is. And it's, it's a really big thing to just, when you write, I always write like nobody is watching. I write for me. And I actually got a question the other day on Tumblr, and I loved it. It made me smile so much. It was like, would you write if no one would ever read your work? And I was like, of course I would. Absolutely, positively. First of all, no one's reading my work right now. Everything I write in Fragile, no one's reading it. Nobody's read what I've written recently. Um, nobody's read what I have a little bit for my next feature. No one outside of my class read my read my spec script. No one is reading my stuff. When I like honestly, do you guys think when I was nine, people were reading my work? No. Mm -mm. The earliest person beside my mom to ever read my book was one of my best friends, and she started reading it in sixth grade, and it was just her. And she doesn't really read them anymore, um, mainly because I get like no, because I don't know. I feel weird about it, but which is completely going against everything I'm saying right now, but no one was reading my work. If, so, if for the rest of like my life, no one read my stuff, would it suck for me? Yeah. I wouldn't stop because I'm doing it for me. You need to write for yourself and write for nobody else. Other, You need to write for nobody other than yourself because when you're writing for yourself and you're writing like no one is watching and no one's ever going to read this, you have, you're free. You have no limitations. Do you think if I was writing a book for my parents or for the school, I would be talking about the issues in Fragile? Hell no. If I even for a second envisioned that my father was going to read Fragile or the kid who called me fat and caused my anorexia, do you think if I like envisioned him reading Fragile, I would write it? Absolutely not. But I write it with me in mind, what I want to say, because if I don't, it's just not being true to myself. And I feel like, honestly, especially in cases like this with controversial things where I do have experience, I feel like it's so selfish to just keep it in. If I I have stories of self-harm and suicide attempts and anorexia, and they're sad, but they're also happy with happy endings and stories of recovery and how to get better and how to restart your life and how beautiful life is. And I think for me, keeping that in is so selfish because I've learned ways to overcome 
adversities and I've learned how to overcome these obstacles that I've learned to overcome the disease that is the third leading cause of death in the world for ages 15 to 44. That's what, this, that's what the statistics are. I've learned to overcome that. And for me to keep that in is so selfish. Because if I die tomorrow, who is that going to help? Nobody. It's just I'm keeping it in. And it's so important to share and to share because maybe it can help someone else. So that is why I'm writing these things. I'm not because honestly... I let the thought, if I can help one person, that I don't care if who else reads this because there's a chance of helping one person. It's so important to just write like nobody is watching you because once you start to feel limited, you're never going to be able to do it. And I definitely know that because if you know you guys will never read it. No one's ever read it besides my mom, I think. No, my old best friend, she read it, but this is a good thing. We were both 10 at the time, so she didn't think it was embarrassing because she was the same age, and this is how we spoke to each other. So she thought it was like, well, this is good because this is how 10-year-olds talk. If she read it now, I would probably never be able to face her again. <laughs> but in Through Baby's Eyes, there were chunks of story missing, and those were the spots, like when Leia lost her virginity and when Ruby was born. And like when all the like the sex scenes and this, because I was uncomfortable with the thought of my mom reading it. I was like, I don't want my mom to know I know how sex works. And like, I don't want her to think I'm thinking about like those ridiculous little thoughts. I don't want anyone to ask questions. I don't want my dad to know I know where babies come from. You guys know what I'm talking about. And that held me back so much. Like, once I got over that, and I wrote, like, no one's gonna read it, I was like, this actually is okay, and she was impressed, like, obviously she knew I knew things, who do you think talk, <laughs> like, where do you think you get the talk from, I don't know why I was so nervous, um, and I feel like a lot of things that people are embarrassed for their, it's for, like, parents or really close people, if you're not comfortable with your parents and then reading your work, that is completely okay. I find it for me that's the most embarrassing thing is having my mom, my dad doesn't read my stuff, but having my mom read stuff sometimes because I'm just like, ooh, especially like guilty of love and she thought it was hilarious and so do the girls at her work, they're like, because I was 15 at the time, they're like, what is wrong with your kid? But yeah. Once you let go of that and you're able to write like no one is watching, you do, you'll be able to write bravely too. Writing brave, it's just having no limitations. It's basically writing for you and finding that strength. Um, that's all, that's all I say is to write like no one is watching and be comfortable with yourself. And I know for me, when I wasn't comfortable with what I was going through and I wasn't comfortable with me, there's no way it could translate onto paper because I had to... I had to accept the words about to come out before I wrote them because if I was writing something that I wasn't okay with, I wasn't comfortable reading it. I and mean, you need to be comfortable with what the material you're producing. So yeah, that's what I have to say about writing, like writing brave and write like no one is watching. And if you guys want more about this, definitely leave in the comments below like what you'd want to see more. Um, because I feel like I'm in every which direction in this video and I'm talking out of like every end of my face. So definitely I, like I said, I've been coming up dry my past few videos like what to talk about. So definitely continue to leave your questions in the comments below and I'll give you guys shout outs and answer questions because sometimes I just like, I don't know, I don't really know what writing stuff to talk about and I feel like my videos can get boring. So anyway, yeah, that's all for, um how I like writing contra like writing controversy and why it doesn't bother me and why I'm able to do that. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and as always I'll talk to you guys in my next video. Bye!